Welcome back to the Paladin Finn Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yakgadget for all your fine quality kayak fishing accessories. Go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighters. Go to pelican.com. And the 153 Bait Company for all your hard and soft bait needs. Go to the153angler.com. So join with me as together we dive into the tips and techniques that will help make us better anglers out on the water. Welcome back to Bass Fishing for Noobs <laughs> on the Paddle and Fin Podcast. I'm your guest, Ryan Milford, former host. And we, we got your host in here, Sean Lever. How you doing, Sean? Sean? Good, man. It's awesome to see you again, brother. I know. I, it's What's it been? Like six months since I've been on here? Yeah, I think you did a, an after hours there. Yeah, yeah uh, I did appearance. The bass fishing for noobs. It's been oh, like yeah. six months. It's been definitely too long, man. So, and just just to clarify, I'm 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 not back. Like I'm <laughs> I'm strictly a guest today. So, <laughs> no, but it's definitely good to have you back, man. So, um, to say I missed you would be an understatement. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've missed y'all a lot. Like that. There have been times where I've been like, you know what, maybe I should, you know, see about coming back. And then I'm like, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, it, it's, I, I got some other stuff going on now and I don't know, I, I don't want to take on too much. And, and then I, I, I don't know, I, I do miss you guys and everything, but. Yeah. No, I, I understand, man. I There's definitely weeks where I come down to record and I'm just, you know, just not into it. And I keep thinking, you know, you know how nice it would be not to have that. But then it only takes one good conversation and I'm, you know, right back at like, ah, oh, I don't want to give this up, man. I like it. Too yeah, much, that, so. that'll get you right there. Yep. So what's been new, man? Uh, what's been going on? I know uh, I did see you catch at least one fish this year. So you're already ahead of me this year, man. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got one on the board for this year. Um, man, last time I had fished up until uh, last weekend was like October in a tournament. And, uh, you know, November was kind of crazy. I didn't get a chance to get out. And well, then, you had some uh, vehicle issues, too, that was probably yeah, holding you well, back a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm getting there, Sean. Getting there. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, my bad. Uh, December... <laughs> I'd planned on hitting it hard. You know, last December is when I caught my PB, that 23 inch giant. And, uh, and so this December I was like, I'm going to hit it hard this year and see if I can catch it again or a bigger one or, you know, so I, I had like, a, I think it was a five day weekend on my birthday weekend, which is early December. And then, you know, we always get around two weeks off from work uh, for Christmas and so like i was planning on you know going hard for december and like the first day of that five day weekend i had um i was going to town and my truck broke down and it sat at a mechanic shop for about a month they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it finally like oh well well the guy over the shop he like had a had a stroke or something like that oh my goodness or, or, yeah so, so, something like that i can't remember exactly what it was but uh he's like I, I just really don't need the stress of it right now so you know we we can't figure it out so you don't owe us anything just come get it so <laughs> um i had another shop come and pick it up and then it was like two weeks before they could even touch it between all the snowstorms we've been having here in Tennessee and, and all that. So, and then they had sickness go through their shop. Well, finally they got to touch it. And the first day they actually touched it, they got it fixed. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It, it was crazy. That is crazy, man. I, I, and that's pretty much your only means of getting your kayak to the water, right? For the most part. Yeah, I mean, my wife drives an SUV. Um, I had a spare SUV, but if if I really wanted to, I guess I could have uh, rooftopped it. Um, not ideal with 
a heavier kayak. I mean, I don't have like a heavy, heavy kayak, but it's like about a hundred pounds without any gear on it. And, but what really got is the mechanics job was like 45 minutes away or so, something like that. And like all my, my, my paddle, my PFD, my catch board, my net, all, all that kind of stuff was in my truck. Okay. At the yeah. shop. So <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. But you weren't planning on it being there that long. Yeah. I, guess, I, well, I the other shop. So I, 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 you know, I was hoping, you know, by the end of that first weekend, you know, I'd have my truck back, but no, didn't work. How, out. uh, how therapeutic was it to finally get back out on the water then? I imagine Dude, it was great. <laughs> and I, I went out to Williamsport, which I've talked about on here a lot. You know, it's got like the three, uh, three main, basically oversized ponds that uh, uh, there, and it's all public. And like as I drove through there, I went on a Sunday, and as I drove through there, like I looked at each one, I was the only person there. I had my pick from all three of these ponds to fish uh, for myself. So I was like. It's kind of cool, but kind of weird. Like it's it's Sunday. We actually have decent weather. You know, it was like in the forties. I was like, and nobody else is out here. Interesting. Now, now there were more people that ended up coming through, but it's like everybody was just driving through and looking at it and then leaving. Hmm. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. Now, uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I I was just going to say, you know, I I started fishing, and you know, it was, you know. It, it felt good. I, it was kind of weird. I don't. I don't really get it. Like I hadn't drank a lot, but I had to pee so many times, <laughs> and I almost fell in standing up to pee one time. <laughs> uh, some things don't change, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But uh, what like what was your water temperatures like? Uh, I don't know. It- I, I forgot to charge my battery for my fish finder, and I realized that as I was loading everything up, and I was like. Well, I guess I'm not taking my fish fighter. But it, it was cold. Okay. Uh, whenever I was loading back up, um, I took the, uh, you know, I took the end of my kayak, set it up on the tailgate, and so it made the other end go down and, and went into the water and my handle's there on the end. So when I reached down there to grab my handle and bring it up there, my hand was, it, it was almost hurting. It was so cold just from <laughs> dipping it down there for a second to grab that handle. Yeah, sometimes when the water's like that cold, man, it cuts right through you. So, yeah, it it, it was pretty chilly, but uh, I don't know. It was just nice getting out there, dude. And I'm sure catching one helped too. You know, getting yeah. that catching after you hadn't caught one for a while. So, yeah, I, I wasn't sure if I remembered how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever like? I know it hit me hard a couple years ago after going a few months without um, without doing it. I, I guess because it was right after my first, like, real year in in kayak fishing. It After my first, like, real year of doing it and then take it, pretty much taking that winter off, that next year, whenever I finally went to sit up, I was goofy. Like, like couldn't – couldn't remember exactly how I had everything set up whenever I caught a fish, trying to remember like the, uh, my routine and everything, trying to figure that out. But, you know, I seemed to have it down pretty good the other day whenever I went. Yeah. I know, uh, last year I had made it a goal to try and catch a fish every month. (laughs) And, uh, I went out quite a few times in January, February, and I didn't catch my first fish until the beginning of April. And, uh, those first three months were just awful. I'm like, I, I have no clue what to try. Uh, I tried all the things I, you know, had confidence in, but, you know, didn't catch anything. So then I was trying, you know, blade baits and all these other cold water things that I had heard of and just not having any luck at all. You know, I just felt like I was wasting so much time and I was just super frustrated. So um, this year I kind of, you know, I, I set that goal for myself again. And, you know, here it is January 30th and I, I don't have a fish yet. But uh, I'm not going to be too hard on myself this year because I really I had one day to fish where I had, you know, fishable water close by me. Um, I did go out for like six hours and I had one uh, largemouth that I uh, Mm -hmm. 
hooked, but I lost him like uh, two foot from the kayak. Mm. So um, that would have been my January fish. And uh, I still might run down to the local creek and, or the little stream right down from my house and see if I can get a bluegill or something uh, today <laughs> or tomorrow. To fish. Just, yep, to fish. just to get something. Um, so Wait, but, uh, go ahead. Well, you know, your January and February fishing is different from my January and February. For sure. Fishing. For sure. Because, you know, for anybody like this new that don't know, Sean's in Pennsylvania. I, I kind of feel weird saying Pennsylvania. Like, you don't even say Pennsylvania. You, you say PA. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sean's in PA. I'm in TN. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm pretty significantly further south. And so temps are generally warmer here. Like, like you, uh, you were talking about how you have like, like ice and stuff. Yeah, oh, we don't have to worry about that down here. I mean, you might have like a shallow, small farm pond that freezes over if it gets colder, but our lakes and rivers don't freeze. Okay. So I mean, we got open water year round. I have some creeks near me that aren't frozen that I could potentially go trout fishing. So I thought about trying that too. Um, but yeah, the Lake Redmond where I fish regularly, the lake that I fish, even the river, the Susquehanna is frozen by me. Like a, there is like some moving water sometimes in the middle, but all the ramps and stuff are all iced up. So, and Lake Redmond has five inches of ice on it right now. So mm. people are ice fishing out there. And I keep, every time I think about, uh, you know, doing that, I'm like, well, I could go get an auger and, you know, get some ice gear and stuff. And then like, you know, what's going to happen then, and then all ice is going to melt. And then I won't I'll have all this stuff that I invested in. <laughs> use, but... but you'll have it for next year. That's right. Well, but see, it's weird. Like uh, I don't remember last year, like last year I was fishing this time and there was hmm. open water. It, it just, for some reason this year is colder and it's been cold it... enough, long enough to, to get some good ice. Now I just heard that there was, it, you know, it's, pretty thick there but there are some shallow spots so you have to be careful but and this year has been kind of crazy i mean we've done gotten snow like here in tennessee we we generally don't really get snow we get ice i was gonna say how often does that happen yeah we we don't get a ton of snow we but we've had what like four or five you know snows so far this year and that's almost like, more than winter. us Weird, yeah. enough, you know. Yeah, it's it, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, we had that big, that big uh, winter storm last year that like the whole country had, right? And and then between last year and this year, we've probably had more snow than we had the past twenty years combined. Like, it's it's crazy. Yeah, no, and and like this year, I've used my snowblower twice. Once was yesterday morning, but that was it was barely like two inches, maybe a one, one to two inches. I, I really didn't need to use it. I was just being lazy. And other than that, we've had one other snow that I snowblowed, but so I think you guys have actually had more snow than us for oddly enough. So. Uh, it, I, I don't know for sure, but you know, we for Tennessee, middle Tennessee, it's, uh, it's been kind of crazy. With all the and, snow. I, and I always hear that, you know, when down South, when you do get snow, your the, the, you know, roads are a, a real mess. Cause they, you know, here in Pennsylvania, they, they like to say they have a good handle on that and, you know, they get it treated and plowed and everything, but down there, are they, does it get to be crazy? I've heard it gets to yeah. be crazy. We don't know how to act <laughs> with snow. All right. Like y'all, y'all prepared for it. I'm sure y'all got all the, whatever you put on the roads and, and like y'all know how to handle like y'all get two foot of snow kids still go to school we get two foot of snow and you know we don't leave the house <laughs> well but, it, here in this part of pa it's, it is a little different they do they still cancel it pretty early but uh up where my dad my dad grew up up i, mean, near I might have exaggerated a little bit no but that's actually <laughs> my dad grew up in up near lake erie and he used to always joke about that oh you guys canceled school for three inches of snow oh my gosh you know it would take three feet of snow for us to cancel school but uh well well down here like we're not accustomed to driving it and and you know really snow isn't that bad to drive in. it's no, the ice right it, and that's that's got us a little bit with some of these snowstorms where you know we're driving you know we drive through it we make it real slushy and then like one particular time 
um, you know, it started snowing. It, it snowed a lot, like quick. And we're driving through it, and it gets all slushy. Well, that night it was supposed to be like seven degrees, so all that just freezes, and you got a ton of ice. And I, I don't know. We, uh, I mean, we got like plow trucks and stuff, but I don't think we have as many as you know most places up north would have. Probably not. But yeah, you no, know, that makes sense. You know, they. They they definitely have a routine up here that they get it cleaned off so that it doesn't refreeze and stuff like that. Now, occasionally that happens and it, it all depends, but they definitely, you know, they do a pretty good job. Um, you know, you give it, you know, half a day and most most of the time, even if it's a major snowstorm, you know, roads are at least passable. So, well, I mean, th- down here, they'll get like the main roads pretty good, pretty quick. But a lot of these back roads stay frozen over for a while. Yeah, no, and, and it's weird. Like I, I actually live on a snow emergency route, even though it's weird. Like I don't know why the snow emergency route goes through our neighborhood because you would almost it's it's just like why would you drive through our neighborhood if you didn't have to? But whatever, I'll take it because it does mean <laughs> it gets plowed somewhat yeah. regularly. So just don't tell your work that. Yeah, like oh, sorry, I can't make it due to the weather. And like <laughs> you, you live in the snow emergency route. Why can't you get out? Like. Uh-huh. Well, it doesn't mean they don't plow my driveway in. So that happens. And then I got to go out and, you know. Yeah, I got a five foot wall at the end of my driveway right now. Dep- <laughs> it depends. It can get heavy. So, <laughs> well, right, uh, back to fishing, back to fishing. Yeah, yeah. So w- at the beginning of last year, when uh, we you were still with me, we were talking about potentially having a little bit of a contest. So I figured it would be good to do a recap of that to see where you ended up because I kind of lost track. Uh, you know, I forget because yeah, you caught so many fish, you, you <laughs> just lost track of how many fish you had. No, I, I, I know how many I have, but I had no clue where you were sitting at. So I had no clue where I was sitting at until <laughs> this morning when I went through all my pictures on my phone to and added them all up. So, well, um, I know yeah, you're, I, gonna, you're gonna embarrass me here. I've like, said a few times on here that uh, so my total for the year was 273 bass, but only 127 of those w- were over 12 inches. So uh, there, only? there was quite a few dinks in there. Uh. So and then I caught um, on top of that, I caught five trout, four crappie, three perch, 10 bluegill, 21 sunfish, eight catfish and one walleye. Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're about to put me to shame here. Now, all right. So, granted, on the bass total, I'm I probably actually have more than what I've got on here from fish that I just didn't take a picture of, like like dinks. It's going to be under twelve inches, right? And, you know, in a tournament or something, catch one and just throw it back without taking a picture. Yep. So, th- this is going off pictures. Uh, bass over twelve inches, sixty two. Uh, total 87. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, uh, I'm embarrassed now. Like, you well, that's a pretty good, pretty good size ratio, though. That means you had most of yours were, yeah, um, keepers at least. Yeah, I, let's see. According to this, I got like 25 dinks. Okay, well, yeah, 62 were over 12 inches. Right. So your your number that your your ratio there is way better than mine. I caught way more dinks than you did but how about your biggest one last year do you know what your biggest one was my biggest one i believe it was 19 and three quarter the one i i I won big fish at uh, one of the williamsport events okay i had uh my 20 and a quarter or 20 and a half smallie so that was mm. i finally broke 20 inches on a small mouth and that was my biggest fish of last year i'd have to look and see what my biggest large mouth was but i don't think it was if it was 19, it was, that was it. It wasn't any bigger than 19. So man, that that's crazy. Small mouth. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Uh, and I, I, I wish I would have taken more pictures of it before I put it back. But honestly, I was like so excited. Um, and it was getting dark. I could, you know, I needed, I knew I needed to get off the water soon. Cause I only had like an hour to fish. I got, I got off work, took my, I, I knew I wanted to fish on the way home. So I put my, truck of the my uh my kayak in the back of my truck and took it to work with me and stopped by the river on my way back through and it was like late fall so 
I basically had an hour of sunlight left from when I got off work to, you know, so I hit the water, didn't even take, I think I took two rods with me and, um, just enough stuff to get out there and was lucky enough to, you know, go right up from, uh, the launch and to a spot that I had been catching some pretty good fish at and, you know, third cast landed the, the big smallie. So maybe definitely a quick trip. And then I was so excited and I, you know, got it unhooked and put it back in the water. I took like two good pictures with it. And then I was like, man, I should have taken more pictures. So. Yeah, that, man, that's, that's crazy. That's yeah. Well, you know, uh, what was it last year or not last year? Uh, the year I started fishing the river more, um, you know, I caught up at the time it was PB, a uh, small mouth, which was like 17 and a half or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, afterwards, I realized I got pictures of it on the board, but afterwards, I realized I didn't take any like selfies with it or nothing. I was like, what? Yeah. But then I no. broke the PB last March. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I had so many fish that I caught that I, that when they first jumped, I thought for sure were over 20. And then they ended up being like 18 or 19, but this one was definitely, and it really didn't fight that much. It, it hit pretty close to the kayak. I was using a lipless crankbait and I had almost got it most of the way back in and it hit like right there. So there was like hardly any fight. Um, you know, it was over so quick. Like it wasn't some long drawn out battle where I thought I was going to lose it or anything. It like jumped once and then I, you know, got it close enough to net it and that was it. So Man, um, don't, don't that suck though? Like, like you get pretty much a small of a lifetime right there, um, right? And, and you always hear those like stories that. of them like peel and drag, and you yeah. know, uh, you know, I fought it for ten minutes to get it close enough. Every time I get it close enough, and I've had smaller fish that kind of did that, you know, but that one just was super quick. And even my my PB smallie was or largemouth was like that too. That thing didn't fight at all hardly it just came in like a log you know yeah i I mean i'm kind of the same way you know my pb smallmouth was caught on the lake i think it what size was it want to say it was i can't even remember what size my pb smallmouth is but it it, you know it's somewhere in the 18 and a half 19 range somewhere around there Mm -hmm. um but yeah, when I caught it, you know, it gave a little fight, but it wasn't nothing crazy. Now that previous PB that I was talking about a minute ago that I caught on the river, that was a fun fight. Like this thing was going here, there, everywhere, just just crazy. And uh, and my PB's uh, large mouth, you know, that twenty three incher, you know, it basically I didn't even feel a bite. It got really my rod got really heavy. So I set the hook and I'm reeling it in. It's just really heavy. And I'm thinking like, I done hooked like a tree limb and I'm dragging it in right now. (laughs) And, and then when it came up, it like kind of came up and like jumped and we're like, Oh my God. And so it, I basically just dragged it in until it got to the kayak. Once it saw the kayak, it started doing a little run, but, you know, nothing too crazy. Now it was a little crazy when I went to net it and I missed and, you know, I, I, I thought I was going to lose the fish there, but I finally got it in the net. But What was that on a tube? Uh, no, the large mouth that was on a, uh, that was on a Kitex swim bait with the jig masters. Underspin. Uh, that's right. I forgot you were a big underspin guy too. Yeah. So yeah. Cause uh, it depends like on a, I had mine on a, a treble hook. So generally once you get them sometime, it depends, but you know, they, if you have one or two hooks in them there, they might not be able to get anywhere. But when you have a single hook like that, it can be scary when they, when you miss it on the net and you know, you might not always get a second chance. So. Yeah. I, I, I definitely got lucky for sure. <clears throat> so um, I know uh, you're still uh, digging the, the uh, tubes, I know, I think that's what you said you caught the one on this year. Yeah, yeah. So, Secret uh, lures, stupid yep. tube. I saw the sweatshirt too, so. <laughs> Man, I, I love this thing. This thing is it's, it's comfortable. It, it's not like a thick hoodie, but it's it, like it's a hoodie, but it's not like a thick one, so. 
Did you um, get any cool stuff for Christmas fishing wise? Or are you mostly, uh, you know, get other stuff no, added to your arsenal at all? I'm trying to think if I even got anything fishing wise for Christmas this year. Hmm. I don't think I did. I kind of got spoiled and then I also <laughs> went, went shopping a little bit more. I've been my, uh, I'm lucky my wife hasn't kicked me out yet. Cause here late, I've been spending a half decent <laughs> chunk of money. I, uh, just got a new, uh, 93, uh, Garmin 93 SV fish finder to replace my old elite five TI. So I basically doubled my screen size. Now it feels like I have a TV on the side of my car. <laughs> um, and but now luckily, if you look at the old one, it's going to be like, how did I use that? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I even see it. Side imaging alone is just the amount of stuff I'm going to be able to see. Cause I, I really side imaging on that. It had it, the five TI, but it was kind of not really worth it because it was so small that it was so hard to see detail anyway. So, um, and luckily I was able to sell it for half decent amount on eBay. And, um, I sold some equipment for work as well on eBay and was able to keep part of those profits. So I basically paid for my new fish finder, you know, for the most part, but, uh, nice. with accessories and stuff. And I, I recently grabbed a Douglas rod. I now finally have my heavy rod. So I, uh, have been, How you liking that? I uh, haven't got to it? use, yeah, I haven't got to use it yet. I strung it up and I've been practicing my flipping and stuff in the house because there's no place to really do it outside so i'm excited to to go give that a try as well um but yeah so between that and uh, all the stuff that i bought for the fish finder because i bought a burley pro transducer cover um i had to get a new uh, fish finder mount from yak attack luckily i wanted to give a shout out to yak attack though i called them up and uh i said hey i have the the quick uh what do they call that the it has the quick release kind of tab at the bottom yeah but I was like, the uh lock and load yeah so i was like i have a lock and load base um i just want to get the new the the top replaced because i have a low rance top that hooks into my elite 5 ti and i need a different one for my garmin and I, I said the whole thing's 40 bucks you know and i didn't want to spend that if i didn't have to and they uh, I sent them an email and they emailed back, oh, that's a special order, but yeah, just call uh, call our uh, our customer service and we can definitely order just the top part for you. And I, I did that and they're like, oh, it's 15 bucks. We'll ship it to you. Oh, we'll include the screws and stuff and everything. I'm like, sweet. And when that's I got it, nice. <laughs> they sent me the whole thing. And they charged Seriously? Me, yeah. And they charged me 15 bucks for it. So I'm like, oh my gosh. Somebody messed know. up there. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'm not, you know. But it definitely. I, I wouldn't have said that on this podcast. Now they're gonna be <laughs> looking for you. Like, okay, we need to collect the other thirty dollars now. <laughs> so, well, so I ended up including that in the, the old one in in my eBay sale for the the Garmin, you know. But uh, yeah, so that that really worked out for me there, luckily. But and I haven't got a chance to use my new fish finder yet. I have spent yesterday, you know, wiring it all up, getting it ready, and. So I'm looking forward to the first time I get to try that as well. It's cool. Yeah, I think the only real new thing that I've gotten lately is me and my dad, we were together and we went to uh, Walmart. And I just happened to look over as we went by the clearance aisle and saw a bunch of fishing stuff in there. I was like, hang on, come here. <laughs> and we go over there and we found these kits uh, by Real Tree Fishing. And they, they had like, all kinds of like just little tools. Like they got like line snips that look like the old, like an oversized version of the boomerang snips. Okay. But they're, they're like, they're beefy. So like, I, I don't know if I'll actually end up using it or not <clears throat> with them being so big, but uh, it's cool to have extra pair of those. But so it's got, I had like a fillet knife. Don't really have much need for that. The re the main reason I bought this set is because it has this pair of pliers in it. It's like needle nose pliers, but it's they're longer, so you can get down into the fish a little further. Like if you get like a uh, a a uh, gut gut hook, yeah. But an issue I have, I usually use what are those called like forceps. Forceps, yeah. yeah. I usually uh, use those for that. But a problem I have once you get down there. And, you know, the hook's all slimy from the fish and everything. You go to grab it and uh, turn it, yeah, they slide off really easy. Mm -hmm. 
Well, these pliers actually at the end, they have a lip. And, and so say this is the lip on one side, say this is the other side of the pliers. They come together like that. So whenever this is like that, it's not going to slip off. Right. So that's why I bought these. Like, oh. I was going to say, I can't <laughs> wait to try them. But like I don't want to gut hook a fish, so right. Like I, I don't want it to come across like that. But yeah, I, I think they're gonna do good for that situation to be able to get it out of the fish and you know help increase the chance or get it back in the water quicker and help increase the chance that you know that fish survives in in that scenario. Now is that like a uh... I've seen the like the pliers that have like a split ring lip on the end. Do you think that's what it's for? Is it for separating split rings? Do you ever see those? Like my my pliers have a little lip on them, but I they they say it's for separating split rings. So when you're trying to, you know, I you know some people have fingernails. I bite my fingernails, so I can't do that. And be like anytime I'm doing or changing out split rings or hooks, I have to uh, use that little lip on the end to get between them to separate them to spin the hook off or spin spin the split ring off. So. Hmm. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't think so, but may, that might be its main purpose. My, but my idea with it was just to keep from the, no, that makes sense. out of the pliers. Right. Right. For sure. No, I, uh, I, uh, that was another Amazon purchase that I found one of those, like it almost looks like a pistol kind of thing where you squeeze it and it has like this hook that comes out and you can hook that around the hook. And when you let go of one of the handles, it, it's spring loaded. So it kind of pulls everything back into the main tube of the, and you can kind of grab onto fish hooks that way. And then you have a little bit more play. Uh, I think I've I seen those before, but I haven't used it much to be honest. I almost always forget it's on my kayak. So I have it kind of up front further away from the, most of the tools that I normally use. So when I, when I do get a deep hooked fish, sometimes I forget that it's up there. Uh, but I did, I think I used it maybe two or three times last year and it worked pretty well. So, yeah, I think I think I've seen those. And you can buy them like dirt cheap on Amazon. You know, you can get like a two pack too. But um, I forget I, it was under ten bucks when I bought them. That's so what you're saying I, w- I wasted my twenty bucks. Well, you know, no, for sure. <laughs> a, a good pair of pliers, like I, I the the pair of pliers that I've been using for like two or three years now, they're tried and true, trusted. But I again, yeah, I I wouldn't trade those either because they're light and you know. They seem to do what I need to do most of the time, but cool. Yeah. How about uh kayaks? What are you thinking? You know, I, I did see a, a hint of something coming potentially. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm uh I listed my kayak up for sale. Um I'm not sure if I'll sell it or not. I I'm not I'm not one of these people that's going to go dirt cheap just to sell it. You know, I, I like my kayak. It's done me good. I kind of want to go a different direction now. So if I can sell it at a decent price, I'll sell it. Uh, if not, I'll just stick with it and keep going like I am. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, this year, for this year, uh, cast, which is uh, – uh, I forget exactly what it stands for. It's like kayak anglers for the state of Tennessee or something like that. But basically it's the group that all the major kayak groups in Tennessee are under. Um, <clears throat> you know, they all go by the same rule sets and they, all, you know, everybody has like their top 10 uh, AOI anglers come together at the end of the year for a state championship. Well, this year they decided to, make uh allow motors because they've never it's always been human powered before that and so they're they're starting to allow motors so if i can sell it i'm probably going to go a motor route but i i you you mentioned xi3 and i the spot lock of that seems like it'd be like totally amazing to have and um i just i'm definitely not there yet but and at least kayak anglers of PA, uh, kayak anglers, they voted this year to keep the human powered thing. So I know tournaments around me anyway are not going to be motorized, uh, at least this year. So I know I have at least another year to mess with that. But see, I don't know how much I will actually use Spotlock if I get an XF3. 
My biggest thing is, and I could be completely wrong. I had I threw out XI three, but I haven't actually done the research on them yet. But if I'm correct, I believe they have a setting where you can set the depth you want to stay in. Okay. And basically, it'll just take you around the bank and keep you in that depth. Okay. And I feel like I would utilize that a lot more than spot lock. So say, say I want to stay in like ten foot of water uh, and cast at the bank. We'll put it on slow, get in that ten foot of water. Let it just slowly take me around the bank while I'm just sitting here casting over here to the bank the whole way we're going, and I'm staying out here. You know. <laughs> okay. Is that I always thought that was more of a function of the the fish finder than the than the the motor, but. I, I could be wrong. I mean, it may have to be one of those situations where, like, the motor and the fish finder are like integrated together. I'm not sure. But like I said, I haven't actually done the research on that. I uh, think if yet, it, but. it sounds like something that you would have to have at least some tie in with uh, a fish finder, but like I said, I could be completely wrong. It, it depends on I think the GPS of the, you know, whatever GPS the XI3 is using to, you know, the same stuff that it would use for spot lock to keep you where you are. It would probably, it would be some kind of route feature or something like that that would allow you to kind of trace along that. But that, that does sound like a great application. And yeah, if you can, you know. Yeah, Cause I don't, I don't sit in a spot uh, a whole lot, like just sit there. Now it would be good. Like if you catch a fish and you want to stay where you're at, you know, hit that button. But, uh, yeah, I mean, either way, I could probably utilize the XI3 nicely. But uh, I've actually heard a guy talk about you can buy the uh, the XI3 that don't have the spot lock and then buy the little piece that for the spot lock, you know, take the top off, stick it in there. So it takes a couple minutes to do, and you actually save a couple hundred bucks. Huh, interesting. But... I, I don't think you can buy the 30, 36 inch shaft without spot lock. Okay. No, I, I, I don't know. The only place I've seen the 30, 36 inch shaft uh, is from New Canoe. I don't think I've seen it from anywhere else. Okay. And then well, if I, you cut it down yourself, it voids the warranty. So I had heard that as well. And I was just going to say, that's the, that's the big thing, right? That, uh, you know, anytime you, you start getting into that territory and you start, you know, potentially voting your warranty, that's, you know, definitely a, a decision you can't take lately, but yeah, especially on something that expensive. I mean, what, what is that like 1300 bucks or something like that? Right. Right. So, you know, and if, you know, they, you know, I have heard about warranty uh, claims on, on those. So it's not definitely not like something that doesn't happen. You know, I, I've heard about like the remotes, you know, having some trouble with those and, the wiring connections and stuff like that. So I, I definitely would want to have the warranty if possible, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I, 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 the remote thing you could probably still get replaced. I mean, I don't think they're going to be like, well, let me see a picture of the, the shaft of your trailer motor. Make sure you didn't cut it down before we replace this remote. You know, <laughs> they're probably just going <laughs> to like look at the remote or whatever, but, Right. If something with the actual trolling motor went wrong, like Yeah, yeah. That would be that would suck for them to be like, uh no, sorry, uh you're you're out of luck there. But yeah. it's like it don't have nothing to do with, with the <laughs> it's, it's in the head or something, you know. It, right. And I'm sure some people have probably all or access to tools that you could do that really well, you know, and, and make it yeah. kind of almost like it, you know, it was pre finished, but I, I'm definitely don't have access to those kind of tools so i'd be <laughs> yeah. hacksawing it and filing it and you know that'd be about as good as i could make it so yeah, about the same man well after uh listening to uh mike grimsley talk to uh josh and uh josh on the uh reel down last week um uh, it made me want to go check out the pucks that uh really help with your positioning uh so i actually after all the stuff I bought for my, my new fish finder. I heard him talk about that and I reached out to him and asked what was all involved with that. And there's like, uh, so the, the GPS puck that he's using is, 
uh, at least when I was looking at it, it looks like around, you know, another $300 plus another $80 in wiring harnesses and stuff like that. So I was like, man, that I could, but, but it, what it, what it lets you do is it, uh, it allows you to, uh, move as slow as you want, but still update your position. So, you know, whereas your the GPS on your fish finder, the normal one, it only updates once every four seconds. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you start turning, it takes a while and you could be past the spot you wanted to try to stop and fish. Whereas this uh, little puck thing updates 10 times a second. So it's constantly updating your position and direction. So it really helps you get on those spots. But like I said, <laughs> after everything I spent on my, my uh, fish finder and I've been lucky enough to, you know, still be living at home and not get kicked <laughs> out. So I, I can't press my luck so much yet, but I, I'm going to roll with it. Uh, the, the setup I have and just see uh, how it goes. And maybe down the road, I can add that it's, it sounds like it's pretty easy to add in and, and wouldn't take a whole lot of stuff. So, but uh, yeah, I, that the, the whole GPS positioning thing, I'm just starting to really learn about. And, you know, after hearing uh, Michael on the, Real down and merely got me interested in that. So it's 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 neat what what everything can do, and I'm sure I'm just scratching the surface yet. But yeah, man, that that sounds pretty cool. Uh, I don't generally use my fish finder a ton. I, I'm still not good at reading it. You know, I basically use it for depth and water temp. I, I, I man, I, I try to look at it. I still have issues with figuring out where i am compared to what i see on the screen right no and i'm i i have the same issues and i'm still definitely learning i'm hoping that this new one is going to help me up my game with that a little bit but on the river i really don't use it much this would be more for lakes or any place mm-hmm. that i'm you know not familiar with but you know the fish the stretch of river that i fish regularly i know that now so well that i really don't need it um that's kind of the way i am with williamsport now you know, water temp, obviously, you know, I, I don't know. But as far as knowing where the deeper areas and shallow areas and all that are, and I can pretty much tell you, like, where almost every tree is that's, like, submerged a little bit. But you can right. see once you get up on it. Right. So, yeah, I'm kind of getting that way with the river and even, like, the grass. I know where the grass edges are pretty much now. I Sometimes that comes up a little bit different each year, but in general, I know where the grass lines are going to be and, and that kind of thing too. So like I said, on the river, it's really, plus it's so shallow sometimes that it doesn't even really, there's not a lot that you're going to see. But um, for the lake, I'm looking forward to it because I think there's a lot of offshore, offshore structure that I've never fished because uh, I, I don't see it or, um, and I've been watching lots of videos about, you know, locating it on side, dropping a waypoint, switching back over to down, down scanning and, and, you know, going back to it and fishing it. So I'm anxious to give that a try. So. Cool. What, what you got going on this year? Like what, what's, what's your plans? Well, um, uh, with uh, kayak anglers, essential PA, that's my local chapter. Um, Mike Reinhold was the guy who ran it for, you know, all the years that I've kind of known about it. Um, this year he kind of took a step back and asked, uh, some of the other anglers if they wanted to help out. So I will actually probably be taking a little bit of a bigger role there in, um, you know, uh, everything from, he did all the tournament scheduling and like all the paperwork for that, but he's kind of left it to me and two other gentlemen, that are in the club with me, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, run the events. So that'll be a big step for me this year. I'm looking forward to it. Um, kind of getting into that side of things. It may even be, you know, judging fish for the, the, the tournaments. And now he, he did all that while still fishing the tournaments. I don't know. I'm hoping I, I can do the same, but we'll see. Um, it's def- so that's a little bit of, uh, one big step that I took this year. Um, probably going to try and do as much of the heroes on the water stuff as I can. Again, last year, uh, we ended up only having like two events just either due to COVID or every time we had an event, the weather didn't cooperate. So we ended up canceling, um, a lot too. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, so the first year I really wanted to get involved with that. And then, you know, we just ended up not having a lot of success with our events. So, um, mother nature didn't really 
cooperate as much. The there was one section of the river I was really looking forward to fish, and the day we went up there, we ended up just having kind of a something on the bank with food and stuff and music because the river wasn't fishable or wasn't safely fishable, especially for people who didn't know what they were doing. Oh, so, man. so that was a bit of a disappointment. But so I'm looking again, looking forward to um, hopefully some you know being able to have most of those events as well. So. It's cool, man. You you go. Uh, uh, Hobie got a Suski event this year. They do, they do, and uh, do I, it? I, I I'm thinking I got to check. You know, see, I, they don't have our on call schedule laid out this year, and that's so far that's the only thing that's going to keep me from doing it. I know um, Just Ethan put Jet the vacation day down. Ethan Jet, who you talked to me about, you know, yeah. uh, he's coming up to do it and potentially uh, might be staying at my place, depending on how that works out. But your place is going to be full. Yeah, well, Jimmy also <laughs> talked to me about that too. So yeah, I might come well, up too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got a house party. I got a huge basement. Um, if you I, right now, I'm working on getting my second or spare bedroom set up. So at least there's one normal bed. But you know, we have air mattresses and stuff too. So me, you know. me and Jimmy can share a room again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that worked out so well last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's probably like, like, no, I'm, I'm never staying in the same room with you ever again. <laughs> Well, I, I don't have any Jim Beam and honey, so uh, you know it'll have to be BYOB. Uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm hoping to do that. Um, got some interesting things on a uh, potential job front too, so things could change there too. Uh, not a hundred percent sure where that's going yet, but um, so that potentially could definitely make that a possibility. Um, they're having the the meet up again and at Dale Hollow. So are I'm you going to go to that? I, I, I have off at this point, so um, I'm hoping to – I'm not looking forward to the 13-hour drive back down yeah. there, but uh, – well, Maybe it'll be, be better this time. Didn't you, like, run into a wreck or something last time or something like that? That was on the drive home. My oh, drive home ended up taking 16 hours because I ran into, like, three different accidents, so that sucked. Um, but, yeah, my drive down was really uneventful, and uh, so I'm hoping it's that way again. Um, but, yeah, definitely looking forward to – seeing was, everybody again so. i was thinking about signing up for that and coming out there well i i should be there hopefully not uh you know barring certain changes but at this point it, I, I did take off for it and uh i'm hoping to make it down there i have a uh, a guided trip scheduled with chris gorsuch uh sometime in april so i'm looking forward to that too that guy's uh professor of the susquehanna so Everybody I talk to, um, you know, the local people here who know him say he's absolutely the best person to learn from. So I'm super looking forward to that. His schedule's really, really tight. And he was Is that like nice. a boat guy. Yeah, he's a boat okay. guy, but he also does kayak. So he, okay. he, he said he, I can choose. I think I chose uh, a boat with him because I'm more we're looking at techniques than I am about kayaking. But yeah. uh, but uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to that, too. Yeah. Um, so I got a lot of exciting things coming up. So who knows, you know, hopefully everything comes together and it all works out. How about you? I know you said you got a, you know, a lot of things you're focusing on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I still haven't got that other show up and running, but yeah, I've kind of gotten lazy with that. I need, need to get a little more focused on that, but on top of that, um, you know, you were talking about Ethan jet, you know, last year I was assistant tournament director for the Williamsport Bass Trail. And he was the tournament director. Well, this year he's kind of handing the reins to me. He's got some other stuff going on I think he's going to be focusing on. I think he's going to be doing a few more national level events, uh, traveling and stuff. So, But, yeah, he's still going to be an assistant uh, with that. But, you know, I'm, I guess, going to be the main TD for that. So we're working on putting together a schedule, and once we get the schedule set up, I'm going to be reaching out to sponsors, trying to get them to sponsor this year. Uh, so anybody wants to sponsor it, hit me up. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be tournament director for that. Um, KBFTN, you know, I've talked about it several times on the podcast. Um, the 444s that we do is a – you know, four groups of four people go out for four hours. Then the winner of each group goes to a championship. And at the end of the year, all the champions do a champion of champions. It, it, it used to be like a, like people loved them. Uh, it got to the point where since, 
it was getting a little frustrating, mainly for like the people organizing them because, you know, people sign up and then they like, well, I can't make it. So they got to find a replacement for them, blah, blah, blah. Or people just wouldn't show up to the ramp and, you know, it's cash pay in at the ramp. Oh, wow. And, okay. And, yeah. So if they don't show up, well, then that's that much less money in the pot. So they changed some stuff last year to try to try to change that. Um, it didn't really get a good. Uh, it didn't really go over well. Um, people weren't signing up or doing it. So I agreed to take that over this year, running that, and I'm making some changes. I'm hoping that this here will get the changes that I make will kind of do the best of both worlds. And, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Interesting. Yeah. So basically tournament directing for two different things and hopefully I can get my other show up and going and then doing my own tournament vision. Yeah. I got, I'm going to have a lot going on with all that. So it does sound pretty busy, but, yeah, but good stuff though. Good stuff. To do it. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, um, is there anything else you wanted to shout out? Any? I know. Uh, are you still with Wicked Weights? You're still uh, yeah. cool. Anybody else you joined up with, or you uh, uh, got anything coming? Uh, no. Well, I mean, I've got Yak Gadget. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I've I've bought a crap ton of their stuff. I just got their shallow anchor pole too. That was not, that was my big Christmas gift. I got the shallow anchor system. I haven't played with that at all yet either. Mm. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. Yeah, dude, I, I still think that uh, that Brad set up that he like that video he still shares after like two years and it's still yep. awesome. Yep. Like him with the anchor wizard. You ain't, you ain't even got to get any more. You know that yeah, gadgets got. Uh, got their own i do right i i have that actually and i i was Did gonna you? say i love it uh i have not had the issues that i had with my anchor wizard with that at all you know um now i've only used it with uh that uh downrigger anchor that i used um uh, i haven't used it on the pole yet but it's definitely easily convertible to that so um the only only thing with with yet gadgets version I, I I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna get a small spring, and then bend it at the ends, and put a one screw in the main base, and one screw in the little locking mechanism, mm-hmm. to where it'll keep it over there, and that way, you know, it's gonna have the click noise whenever you reel it in. But I don't care about that. But you know, it's basically gonna keep it locked. Yeah, while you do that and then just one when you want to let it out one hand or one finger to open it up so i'm, I'm gonna do that and try that out i, th- I think uh it'll be pretty cool like that yeah that sounds like a pretty easy modification to to get that functionality i i, I do know that there was like a time or two where i you know kind of dropped i pulled it open and went to drop the anchor and it just went you know like the handle's like spinning like crazy because it, <laughs> it dropped quick and uh you know i just forgot to put my hand on that and you know slowly let it down i mean it, it worked but you know definitely that would be a a good modification to try so yeah oh uh, well i need to i've been thinking about this forever and i need to actually do it and then uh i what i do i'll post it to the yak gadget owners page on facebook and so people can see that, can see how I do it, see how it works out. But yeah, yeah, no, that's a good spot to go check because there's all sorts of good, I think. And John is so cool with, you know, he, he'll he take that kind of stuff and, and you know, see how he can improve the product moving forward. So yeah, he's constantly yeah, doing that. He's definitely done stuff like that where, where people bring it to his, um, bring it to his attention. Like, you know, this could be better if you, put a hole here or something just like I, I think I could be wrong, but I believe that Brian actually gave the idea on the, uh, the low pro crate. Um, I think Brian drilled some holes uh, on the top or the further away part of uh, where the, 
where the top piece hangs over. You know, it's that okay. elastic string or whatever oh, yeah. that goes over. Yep. I think mm-hmm. Brian actually drilled holes and then like put like a zip tie or whatever around that so that part couldn't fall off. And, okay. And now it actually comes with the holes. Oh, so uh, okay. I don't, and I could be mistaken on that. It could have always been there and Brian was uh, the first person my, to see it do that. My Mine doesn't have it, so. Okay. Um, I know that's definitely something. Yeah, I know mine came with it. I usually take my uh, bungees from the the tank well and I put it over those hooks after I have the top on. I kind of run it up over around the uh, the rod holders, like so through the two rod holders on either side, and then up around that little that little notch, and that kind of keeps the top connected, so I know it won't just come off. So, see, I used to run. Uh, my bungee from the kayak over top of that, over top of the uh, rod holders. I don't even use those rod holders anymore. Okay. My favorite accessory by Yak Gadget is those uh, flex rod stagers. Yeah. I got two sets, one on each side. So my rods are laying down right here, kind of beside me, kind of behind me or whatever. And uh, I, I love, I love that. Like, I can't stand rods to be standing straight up. No telling how many times I've went back to cast and caught a rod. And, how do uh, you, uh, if they're on both sides of you, how do you get in and out of your kayak? Because uh, well, I, I was curious about well, that. I, I have them on one side. I have a set of those, and I have it on one side. But I, I, I don't have them, like, up on the side. Oh, uh, okay. I, I have them, they're like, like the butts of the rods are probably about, probably come to about the level with where my back is and then they go backwards they go backwards i got you okay yeah so the side the sides are open i don't i don't have those running like that okay that that might work for me i'll have to take a look at that and uh because i haven't used them as much i did like the idea of it and it works okay um i only used them for tournaments last year uh for like you know the the two that i did just to be able to carry uh two extra rods and, um, so I had it off to my right side cause I don't fish generally from that side as much. I generally fish mostly to my left side cause yeah. my fish finders over there. And, um, so that it worked, that work part worked out good for me. Um, but I just, I was curious about the people who had them on both sides, but that makes sense. If you yeah, I, I mean, the, you could do so much with those depending on, you know, what exactly is you want, like, I've actually got an extra one. Um, but the first set that I bought, I uh, did some redneck engineering <laughs> and I ended up, one ended up falling into the water and I lost it. So then I bought two more sets, did that. Well, the one that I still had from the first set, I put it up on the front. So the rod that I'm, I usually have one or two rods up front with me. Mm-hmm. And I'll lay those kind of beside my seat and let the rod go out and go on top of that one. So. Okay. Yeah. I do that now, but I, I don't have anything to hold them. I just kind of lay it over the front hatch and kind of the butt back by my feet, you know, by the, the bottom of my seat. So. Well, my, my biggest thing with it is before I had that to kind of hold that rod over, like they would kind of come over and like I'd almost hit them or step on them whenever I'm like going to pedal or whatever. Yep. No, so there's definitely times where I got. That's good. Yeah, I, I can see where that would make sense because I there is times where I've pedaled and hit my rods that are laying going out the front. So that makes sense. Cool, man. Um, anything else you wanted to shout out? I we're getting on uh, close to an hour, um, so I gotta run. My daughter has a a choir or a uh, band concert that I got to get ready for. I have a, but um, if you have anything else you want to shout out, I wanted to give you the opportunity because. Uh, no, I mean, if, if you're in the middle Tennessee area, you know, check out Williamsport Bass Trail, come out and fish with us. Um, no, appreciate you having me on here and Pat and Finn, you know, y'all, y'all still my family. I was going to say, once you're, I told uh, Sam Jones that last week. Once you're PNF family, you're always PNF family. So, yeah. Sa- Sam's right. a good guy, too. 
Yes, yes. We had a good conversation last week. Yeah, so. that was a good episode. I heard it. Thanks. All right, man. Well, don't be a stranger. You're always welcome. You just hit me up and let me know when you want to come back. If you have, you know, you know, your trails that you want to shout out or when you're getting close to closer to that time, let me know. And we'll definitely have you back on and um, let me know how many fish you catch this year. I'm curious. You, you want to make it, you want to go ahead and just make it another competition? I mean, yeah, like sure. Man. It through the year or whatever. That works for me. You just send me your numbers and I'll, I'll keep the listeners informed of where you're at and where I'm at. So, okay. well, I'm on the board with one. So, yeah, you're already beating me, man. <laughs> so, all right, uh, dude. Well, uh, again, thanks again for coming on. It's good to see you again. I hope uh, you have a great uh, year fishing and I look forward to catching up with you and seeing how it's going. All right. All right, man. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, this has been another episode of Bass Fishing for Noobs here on the Panel of Fin Podcast, where, as always, we bring you the techniques, the tricks, and the tips to help you rip more lips. I probably should have let you try that just to see. <laughs> you, you want me to, want me to go? Want me to go? Yeah, just give it a try. See if you still got it. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been the Bass Fishing for Noobs uh, segment on the Panel of Fin Podcast, bringing you the techniques, tricks, and tips to help you rip more lips. Later, wow, y'all. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I Good still job, got man. it. All right, man. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you later. Later. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Fin. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Fin on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com.